The question, how did life change or evolve over time, has been argued for centuries. Since at least the 18th century, scientists have openly debated this, and two competing scientific theories have emerged to try to explain how evolution may have occurred. The first of these suggests that physical changes happen continuously in slow increments. The alternative suggestion is that morphological changes happen relatively quickly in between long periods of stasis. The early development of geology as a scientific discipline, the suggestion was made that the present was the key to the past. In other words, processes happening today have also been happening for millions of years. And through this knowledge, we can read signs in the rock record that indicate what happened back then. This concept was initially developed by Scottish geologist James Hutton at the close of the 18th century. Hutton realised that the age of the Earth was likely to be extremely old, and thus these natural processes must have been taking place for a long time. These ideas were further developed by Charles Lyell in his book The Principles of Geology, first published in three volumes between 1830 and 1833. A young naturalist named Charles Darwin took Hutton's book with him as he circumnavigated the globe between 1831 and 1836, exploring new lands and documenting the animals and plants living there. Lyle's book had a profound impact on his thinkings, eventually leading to the publication of Darwin's masterpiece, On the Origin of Species, in 1859, arguably one of the most important books in science. Darwin's ideas on evolution revolutionised the understanding of the natural world and how it functions. He suggested that diverse groups of organisms appear through evolution from a shared common ancestry. He determined that the driving force of this was natural selection, triggered by the competition of evolving species, also known as survival of the fittest. Darwin realised that these morphological changes must have taken generations to appear, thus requiring a long time to take effect. His evolutionary model, termed phyletic gradualism, proposed that evolution occurs in slow, steady and continuous increments over time. Under this model, a species slowly transforms into a completely new one. The formative research of Gregor Mendel, a biologist and monk in the 1860s, shone a light onto how genes are passed through generations and the effect of this on evolution and inheritance. By monitoring the flowers in his garden, Mendel was able to observe and predict morphological changes which established a baseline theory for genetics that is still applicable today. This idea was correlated in the 20th century with Darwin's theory of evolution by Ernest Mayer a leading biologist who contributed to a new emerging evolutionary term called modern synthesis. One of the biggest questions posed in Darwin's book on the origin of species had been how and why did speciations occur? Mayer's work, published in 1942, stated that while Darwin's theory likely explains the entirety of evolution, speciation occurred due to the separation of groups as a result of continental breakup and mountain events. These changes in environment force separated groups of the same species to develop unique adaptations applicable to their surrounding environment, eventually resulting in speciation. Mayer considered these new species as the driving force behind evolutionary progress. Phyletic gradualism and the complementary modern synthesis remained the dominant theories of evolution for over a century. Until 1972, when Niles Eldridge and Stephen Jay Gould a radical alternative explanation termed punctuated equilibrium. This model suggests that sudden events had directed evolution, a suggestion reminiscent of the catastrophism theory proposed by French autonomist and paleontologist George Cuvier in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Punctuated equilibrium attempts to explain the discontinuous and sudden evolutionary changes commonly found in the fossil record. It proposed that evolution took place in an explosive manner, with speciation occurring rapidly and within a short amount of time. Following these large-scale events, the new species would remain physically and morphologically the same for a relatively long period of time until the next speciation event occurred. Sudden and catastrophic events playing a leading role in the evolution of life on Earth is a popular idea today. Under this theory, each period of geological time ended in a rapid catastrophe, which caused extreme destruction to marine and terrestrial life living during that interval of time. New species emerged and evolved to fill the niches left behind, which is frequently preserved in the geological record. Mass extinctions are examples of global catastrophes altering the biodiversity on Earth. The Cretaceous-Paleogene mass extinction took place 66 million years ago, 
and is famously known for the loss of the dinosaurs. The leading theories for the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction are major extraterrestrial impacts or large-scale volcanism from the Deccan region in India. More gradual changes in climate and paleo environment may have been proposed in the past as an alternative cause, but this idea isn't popular today. In 1987, Peter Sheldon published his findings on an extremely extensive collection of fossilized trilobites from 450 million years ago. Trilobites are a group of extinct fossilized arthropods distinguished by three lobed body forms. In his paper, Sheldon examined over 15,000 trilobite fossils and through detailed morphological analysis conclusively demonstrated that over time they slowly and continuously changed their morphology. Specifically, he observed that the number of ribs in the tail region of trilobites increased gradually over a period of two million years and it is believed to be associated with increasing size and diversifying niches. Darwin's original proposal of gradual evolution continues to influence and shape the ideas of today, but the addition of Eldridge and Gould's theory of punctuated equilibrium provides a thought-provoking contrast, allowing for the spark of curiosity to continue to flourish. Has life evolved continuously and slowly throughout time, or have major events played a larger and more important role, leading to drastic changes within animal and plant groupings? The work throughout history has allowed the debate on punctuated versus gradualism to continue and advance. And while we may never know what has truly driven life's progress on Earth, it is quite possible that the evolution of life has been shaped by the forces invoked by both competing theories.